Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this Cooler Master Silent Pro Hybrid 1050 watt power supply. Let's start with a closer look at the box. As you can see, Silent Pro Hybrid, what makes it hybrid? Well, that is the inclusion of a fan controller and the ability to control not just the power supply fan, but also other system fans using this little five and a quarter inch front panel bracket. At least I'm assuming it's five and a quarter inch. I'll confirm that when we get in the box. Uh, it's 200, it has a 200 watt fanless mode, uh, which means the power supply will run completely silently when it's drawing 200 watts or less. Uh, you get 82 amps on a single 12 volt rail, uh, integrated 7 volt fan port. Here are some of the specs over here on the side, so you can see the specific model number, form factor, uh, active power factor correction. It's got a 135 millimeter silent hydraulic bearing fan, 100,000 hour mean time between failure. All of the overcurrent and other protections there that come uh, with the power supply, dimensions right there, safety, and uh, there's all your connectors, which I'm going to show you once I get into the box, and then uh, there's there's a chart showing how efficient this is. 80 plus gold certified, uh, which means that on average it's going to be 90% efficient based on the power draw it's pulling from your wall socket. Next up, an unboxing, but I uh, almost forgot to, five-year warranty on this product from Cooler Master, so very long warranty, I should say. Speaking of which, there's your limited warranty card with some service information, nice and concise. Here is your power supply user's manual, so um, this should have some instructions in multiple languages and maybe some uh, layout of the, uh, the power design of the power supply and the modular cables and all that good stuff. Here, it's wrapped in plastic, that's your five and a quarter inch drive bay adapter for the fan controller. Here's the power supply, also wrapped in plastic. Here are some, uh, some cables. I'm going to get all this stuff sorted out and then, and then I'll actually tell you what's what. Okay guys, so here uh, is the power supply itself. Nice and beefy there on the, this side. You can see the 135 millimeter fan that's pre-installed of course to keep all the components cool. Uh, it's on the top here. You could also mount it on the bottom. Either way works. Most cases have a, a, a gap here in the bottom or some grilling, so usually you point that down so it can draw in fresh air from within the case. Uh, that being said, you can see uh, logos on either side, SPH 1050 watt. So whichever way you have it oriented, you will be able to see that and everyone will be able to see the wattage of your power supply. Here on the back, we have some more grilling for ventilation, also your AC adapter or your AC power cable plug, as well as one of the extra wide switches to turn the power supply on or off. Over on this side we can see the actual power chart. Uh, so as you can see the aforementioned 82 amp single 12 volt rail design uh, as well as all the other specifications 80 plus gold certification and uh, a nice sticker indicating that uh, Cooler Master has tested and verified this unit prior to shipping it out. All right here's the good part right here and that is that this uh, power supply is fully 100% modular, and uh, they have all of the modular plugs right here. Now, um, the gray ones here are going to be for PCI Express connections. Uh, the 24-pin one right here is going to be for your main 24-pin uh, motherboard power connector. The thinner 4-pin uh, plugs here across the middle are going to be for most of your um, uh, peripheral cables, so your serial ATA and Molex plugs. Uh, on the upper right here, you got a couple plugs, and those are going to be to plug in the cables for your supplemental CPU power, so your 4-pin or your 8-pin uh, CPU power. And then uh, over here are some additional plugs that you probably maybe haven't seen exactly, but um, this plug right here actually goes with this little cable. Uh, it's braided, of course, but uh, you're essentially going to plug that one end here to the power supply. The other end goes over to the 5 and quarter inch uh, front panel uh, adapter, which we're going to move on to in just a second, but that's to sort of uh, provide communication between the power supply and that front panel adapter. And then next to that, you actually have two uh, three-pin fan connectors. So you can plug fans directly in here to the power supply, and based on the way most cases are laid out, that will give you a couple fan plugs uh, that you can use the um, fan controller uh, kind of close to the bottom of the case or the top of the case, wherever you have the power supply plugged in. If you need additional cable length, they have provided a couple extension cables here, so that'll just sort of take uh, any three-pin fan header and give you an extension on it, so you can position the fan wherever you want throughout your case. And then uh, that all ties in with this unit right here, which is your five and a quarter inch fan controller. Of course, get a little baggie with four screws, so you can mount that into a five and a quarter inch bay on your computer case. 
It's got a couple knobs up here so you can control the system fan speed as well as the power supply fan speed. Uh, you can also switch between auto and manual mode there, and there's a couple LED lights on the front that will indicate which you've switched to. And then here at the back, you can see the other end of where that little five-pin five uh, uh, cable goes that connects over to the power supply. And then you get three additional 7-volt uh, fan headers right there, all three-pin fan headers that you can plug your case fans into to control with this fan controller. Next, we're moving on to the modular cabling, and it's all provided in this attractive Cooler Master pouch, so you can store the ones that you're not using. Uh, you, of course, also get an AC power cable. This is a heavier-duty one. It's a 15-amp cable, so uh, don't use one of the typical cables that you get with lower wattage power supplies. You actually need the amperage available on this cable. Uh, while I'm mentioning that, I might as well say you should also double-check uh, your power strip. If you're plugging into a power strip, make sure it can provide uh, the rated amperage and wattage for this power supply. That said, uh, let's, here are your CPU supplemental power cables. Uh, both of these are 8-pin, and the CPU part can be 4 or 8-pin. I measured the length of this with uh, this tape measure, and I'm not going to do it again, but you'll have to trust me. These are 28 inches long, measured from the base of each plug. Then you also have four of your uh, video uh, power connectors, PCI Express power connectors. Don't worry if you saw the six-pin uh, plug on the modular part of the power supply. Both of, or all four of these uh, will extend into six plus two pin, so six or eight pin PCI Express power connectors. That gives you four times two, so up to eight of these six plus two pin power connectors. Uh, again, I also measured these, and they are 26 inches measured from the base of each plug. Next up, we have our peripheral cables, uh, starting off with a couple Molex cables over here on this side. So this one has two Molex plugs and a floppy power connector, and this one has three Molex plugs. Uh, both of these cables measure 20 inches to the first plug, 28 inches if you measure it to the final plug. So you get up to five Molex connectors and a single floppy there. And then here we have our serial ATA cables, which uh, if you're building a new computer, you probably have a lot more SATA connectors than Molex. Uh, these cables actually measure 32 inches at the longest, measured from the uh, mo modular connector here all the way down to the last SATA connector, or again, 20 inches over here to the first connector. You get three of these cables total. There's four serial ATA plugs on each one, so that gives you up to 12 serial ATA power connectors out of the box. Also, all of these cables uh, have this sort of nice ribbon-style cabling. It's black, it's sort of low profile, uh, that kind of helps you be able to tuck it into narrow places. Also, if you're routing cables behind the motherboard or something like that, it helps it keep a bit flatter. So, um, nice cabling for all these. Finally, we also have a uh, main motherboard power connector, so a 24-pin power connector, uh, which leads over here on this side to... Actually, they're just both solid 24-pin power connectors. Good. I haven't seen a 20-pin motherboard power connector in years. Uh, this one is actually sleeved. Uh, this one does have colors on the plugs, but if any, electric any electrician will tell you, that's very important to be able to see which colors are going where. And then this cable, I didn't measure. Let me see if I can do it on the fly here. If I stretch it out, I'm going to call that 25 inches, give or take depending on how flat you can actually stretch that cable out to be. So about 25 inches on your 24-pin main power connector. And I nearly forgot, but you also get, of course, four mounting screws to mount the power supply to your computer case. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the Cooler Master Silent Pro Hybrid 1050-watt power supply. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, head over to our Newegg YouTube channel, and don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.